From Viking halls to the cities of the future, Terrain Buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Flames of War brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to the hub on beastsofwar.com to find news, tactics and tutorials about the game. Hello guys and welcome to What's in the Box. I am joined by Gianna and we're going to be chatting about Wings of Glory, uh, the Battle of Britain starter box set. Now, I have never touched Wings of Glory, so all I know about in this box is the planes. So I'm relying on you to tell me a bit more about the actual game. Aviation. Thank goodness, a little <laughs> aviation. It's not, it's here not with modern, Thank God we're going to talk about airplanes. <laughs> this is awesome. So... The Battle of Britain set is the newest set by Eris Games uh, in their Wings of Glory set. Um, obviously, everybody knows this was their finest hour. Yep. Um, Battle of Britain took place in 1940. Summer of. Um, it was really the turning point, I believe, for the war. Mm -hmm. um, it showed that England and its allies, there was Polish in the RAF at the time. Yeah. There was Americans that were flying in a special unit as well, and Canadians and so on. Um, they all proved to the world that they could stand up against the Nazi machine at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it actually was a driving factor in getting the U.S. And more involved in the war prior yeah. to 1941 with Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. um, so it showed that not only could they stand up to the war, to the Nazi machine, but that they also needed help desperately. Um, so it did wake up the western part of the world, yeah. i.e. the U.S. Um, because for there was a, quite some time we wanted to stay out of the war. We felt it wasn't our war. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, we had gone through some tough times as the Americans, but this really showed that we needed to step in and help out our friends overseas. Mm -hmm. So with that, let's crack open the box, shall sure. we? Sure. So you get, what, four planes in four. this? Four, yeah. Yep. So you get two Supermarine Spitfires and two Messerschmitt 109s, the sort of classic Battle of Britain yes. combo. Everybody remembers the Spitfire and everybody knows about the Messerschmitt. Uh, I see the Hurricanes are lacking from this box, but I believe they're in an expansion pack. So. Which we might see. Yeah, we might. Right. So we have a lot of stuff. There's a lot of paperwork in this, which is probably why I've not been near it before. But I'm sure... Once you break it down, it's not that yeah. intimidating. Um, it is a really cool system. If you're familiar with other flight-type games, um, this will make a lot of sense to you. Essentially, what you're doing is you're taking your aircraft, in this case, your Messerschmitts and your Spitfires. You're pre-planning your maneuvers. You're determining speed and elevation and attitude and altitude, all that. And... And that goes into aerial combat. So it's very similar. Um, why don't we start with the paper stuff, the cards, yep. and then we'll get to the models last. Sure. Let's go for it then. So what do you want to show first? Uh, let's go ahead and show a control deck. Okay. Uh, this, In this case, it'll be the Spitfire. Oh, of course, they're falling all over the place for me. <laughs> there you are, John. All right. So I guess this is the, the base stat card then. Yeah. Right, that's the unit card for that aircraft, in this case, a Spitfire. Mm -hmm. um, it shows you your damage and you know maneuverability, which control deck, that's that A down there with the arrow. Yep. Uh, weapons effectiveness, you should see that here, though that's short range, and then the bottom one's long range for weapons, and then obviously the firing arc. There. Yeah. So what else is there in here? Those else? are special skills cards. There's like three or four in, in each deck. Yeah. Um, it's just special actions you can take, you know, if you're playing more advanced rules. Um, you know, if you're doing a reverse dive and things like that. So you can, instead of having the plane stall out on a maneuver, you can you pull that card out and it would help prevent that from happening. Lucky pilot. Everybody needs a lucky pilot. I'm right. And sputtering engines. Mm -hmm. So and then the rest of this deck is what appears to be maneuvers. maneuvers. Uh-huh. Okay. So you have a maneuver deck, and if you look at it, it shows you the maneuver. And then it's kind of hard to, but there's a blue arrow here and then the white arrow. Yep. The white arrow is for low speed maneuver mm -hmm. and the blue is for high speed maneuver. So when you plan out your, your turn, you're going to signify whether you're going to do a high speed or low speed by a token. Yeah. And then so you've got curves, you know, different angled maneuvers. 
Yeah, so let's see if we can find something that looks a little more There tricky. should be an Immelman turn in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, well, that looks interesting because I believe that... So this is, a, this is an intercept move. Yep. So, you, um, you know, you can play in that low speed turn, and what you're trying to do is predict that, that your um, enemy is going to turn in front of you, and you can do a low speed to stop. And then get on their six. Mm -hmm. That's an aviation term. John. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> and uh, get guns on. Yeah. And then, you know, get the ideal shot. Because obviously the ideal shot in this type of warfare is six behind them and uh, up there above them, just off the, above their tail. Mm -hmm. So that's the maneuvers. And then the, the cards don't explain much to me in, in that way. It just shows, like, the, the basics. I right. assume... The rule book will tell me. The rule book will go into it more detail. The one yeah. we were looking for, the Immelman turn, that's like a hammerhead turn. Um, yeah. That's where you're going to fly out, and then you're going to do a direct cut back, a yeah. hammerhead, essentially. Sort of stand it so, on the wingtip and bring it yep, right Yeah, you're going to bring it right back into, so you're going to come out, and the idea is to go them out, and then you're going to come on guns on, mm -hmm. you know. All right, so what else do we have here? There's, there's obviously decks for each of the... Yes, each aircraft has its own deck, yep. so there should be four decks, one for each aircraft, for Texas your Messerschmitt's. And Messerschmitt. Yep, so there's the two Messerschmitt decks and yep. the other Spitfire decks, so that's those. Those. And then you've got some other maneuver, uh, special cards. These are like your bombing runs, so that would be for scenarios that are within the booklet. Yeah, so... So it just plans out, you know, when you're doing special scenarios. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... What and else then we have? we have the control board. All right, so let's go over to here. So there's two sides to the control board. There's like a standard game, and then if you flip it over, there's one for advanced, and that's just for different special tokens yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what you would do is you would put your pre-planned maneuver for this turn, and then this would be where your previous one is, because it yeah. all takes into account on positioning. You would put your indicator here, whether you're doing a low-speed turn or maneuver or a high-speed maneuver. Mm -hmm. um, so on the standard game, this is where you put your, your damage, your cards, and then... So that determines what you're doing in that turn. Yeah, okay. Pretty straightforward. All right. Um, what else do we have? Because there's a lot of tokens. A lot of tokens. Now, yeah. the tokens, and we'll show those. Okay. You got those there. So the tokens, basically... There we are. Um, show different types of damage that you can take. Those sync in with this set of tokens as well. Okay. So, so what happens is these tokens have numbers on them. And if you flip the card over, and if you flip this one over just so we can see as well, mm -hmm. you can see those match up in color. So what happens is you punch out all the same color. You put them in a draw bag, a cup, whatever. Yeah. And then as you get into combat, you would draw that many, so whatever your combat on your card says, you know, short range, it's color-coded to those tokens, so that player who's being targeted would draw out that many tokens. Mm -hmm. You would look at the damage or whatever's on the other side, and that tells you how much damage your plane takes, or in some of those special ones on here, is different type of damage. So it could be like, you know, you have got smoke, uh, your systems are damaged, all that. Yep. And then you have more advanced tokens down here for advanced rules. Because it, 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 you start off, it's very simple, mm -hmm. basic game. And then as you get into it, you can now you know, get into all different kinds of types of issues with the game as far as your aircraft maneuvering and all that. Yep. So you get several stacks of those. There's you never two. run out of those. Yep, so there's two stacks of those. That's quite yep. a lot of stuff there. So a lot of tokens. Yep. Um, have we missed anything else? This uh, the, the stick, the, the measuring the stick. stick. So it's a stick. It's a stick. It, it, like any other, you know, type game, flight type game, you have long range and short range. Yep. Denoted by that mark right there. Mm -hmm. um, and then that just fits into your uh, your arc, and that would determine firing and yeah, and and distance for flight. Okay. And then we have the lovely rule book, mm -hmm. which breaks down everything you need to do to get into the game. It's pretty straightforward. It's very well planned out. Yeah. I'll just center it up here. Yeah. There we go. So it, it breaks down each, you know, the card, the base, mm -hmm. uh, what everything m means. Uh, it's broken down in different sections from the basic console, as you can see there, as we explained. Yeah. Um, and then how maneuver and line of sight works. And then, it, you know, you have the standard rules. 
Yeah, and then I'll explain all your counters, and you've got the advanced console over there too. Correct. So. And then he gets into advanced rules, mm -hmm. which you know, when you're ready to talk about at, at bleh, altitude, yeah, uh, you would actually go up and down on your stand. Right. So you're adding height to the actual model as Correct. well as everything else. And then you have optional rules, you know, if you want to make it like clouds, you're fighting in the clouds and things like that to make yeah. it a more interesting and in-depth game. Mm -hmm. Then you got special rules, and that's where those other cards come into play. So you have bombing, you know, you can do bombing runs, um, you know, anti-aircraft, things like that, dive bombing. Yeah. So, you know, it tries to encompass aviation as much as, in a, as, much as it can. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always been a challenge on a tabletop to simulate aerial combat. Yeah. You know, honestly, when you think about it, ground combat on a table is pretty easy to yeah. simulate. It's more or less a, a 2D surface, whereas exactly. obviously aviation is encompassing everything. You know, and, and you want to try and make it as realistic as possible, but if you go too far, it becomes really bogged down, and yeah. then people don't have fun. So Absolutely. But there are people who want to make it, you know, somewhat realistic and they try and do the best they can. Mm -hmm. And then you have a little scenario book as well. Yeah, so the scenario book has just four specifically for the Battle of Britain stuff. So it's telling you what's happening, where you are, you know, the battle over Waterloo, bombs over Dover and all that sort of stuff. Laying out what you're doing and what's happening in the air. And then at the back, we get to look at all the pretty planes that we haven't yet got. So... And the cool thing is, is once you get outside, even the Battle of Britain, and you you know, want to expand your experience, if you look down here, yeah. you've got some pretty B-17s. I think there's some B-25s in there as well. B-17s, there's uh, Lancasters. Those are Japanese. Uh, there's a few American. Yeah, you got North American B-25s yeah. down there. And, you know, there's all kinds of planes, and they are, Ares Games is coming out with more planes yeah. um, all the time because there were so many different aircraft during... Um, World the, War II. The development cycle on them just went faster and faster and faster. But for an aerial combat game, if you're looking for something that's somewhat easy to get into, mm. but will add a lot of depth, uh, this game does a really good job of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it scratches that itch. <laughs> so, want to look at planes? some airplanes? Yeah, we haven't looked at the planes yet. Sweet! Let's start with the Messerschmitt, shall okay. we? Okay. There we go. So that is the... Uh, BF-109, or the Messerschmitt 109, yep. um, it was a very great little fighter aircraft. Very, um, very small, very maneuverable, and pretty damn fast as well. It was. Um, it's got its claim to fame starting in the uh, Spanish Civil War. Yeah, exactly. Um, so a lot of the pilots that fought in the early years of World War II already were experienced combat pilots um, from flying in the Spanish Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the clear base on this. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. You know, it doesn't detract from if you have a really nice table laid out, um, yeah. but it still gives you your firing arc and all your information you need on there. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, it you know it takes like 17 damage and which deck it uses and then what the weapons are for short and long range. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful little pre-paint, mm -hmm. you know? I it's mean, a, for a pre-paint. Oh, it's, it's very tidy for a pre-paint. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but as nice as the Messerschmitt is, you want to see the other one, don't you? There's, in every person that calls them British, there's a little piece of Spitfire in them. There's a little so, Spitfire? There's a little Are Spitfire. Are you a Spitfire? I, I love Spitfires. Well, why don't we take a look at that, Let's baby. have a look at the Spitfire. Look at you. Hello. Oops. My elliptical wing friend. My best friend. <laughs> so, do you want an interesting fact about the uh, Spitfire in the early years? Uh, well, which interesting fact are we going to talk about? Do you know about? most of those were privately owned? Yes. And a lot of them were sponsored, yes. too. Yep. So, um, uh, yeah, towns, clubs. Banks. Even the Queen of, was it Sweden? Yeah, they, they got one. She Sweden. spent 415,000 um, pounds, and I think that bought 26 airplanes. Yeah. Uh, they were roughly, at World War II time, cost 5,000 pounds. Yeah. So, I mean, towns would get together and sponsor... Sponsor a Spitfire. It's amazing. And they have naming rights. Mm -hmm. So they got naming rights on it. At least they didn't have a big old banner that said, this plane is sponsored by. <laughs> <laughs> there was one, I can't remember uh, if, it's, if it's, it's... I know that today, um, restoring Spitfires and stuff, you do still find corporations and individuals coming along and sponsoring. If the anybody would like to sponsor one for the Beast of War crew, we'd be <laughs> happy to take your donations. I, I know... I know one person with a pilot license that would love to get behind the seat of one. I have a pilot's license. And you'd like to get in the seat of one. I sure would. Yeah. 
Um, a friend of mine in the reenactment club, he would actually buy a Spitfire if he had the money. That would be he's, sweet. He's ready for one. Or a P-51. Even though I'm a rotor head and not a, you know, an airplane person, but... <laughs> Uh, it's it's a tr honestly it's truly an amazing airplane. Yeah. Um, it held its own. And another interesting thing about that is it was one of the first planes that the British government insisted on 100, 100 octane fuel for, mm -hmm. because that 100 octane gave it an extra 30 pounds of thrust. Um, you know, because the German planes were only running on 87 octane because yeah. they actually had to use coal and refine coal to get fuel because they didn't have traditional fuel sources. That's why they went after the Romanian air f oil fields later on in the war. Yeah. Um, so you could actually get a little bit more push out of that. That plane could be faster. Yeah. That one could be better in a tighter turn. Yeah. Um, but honestly, when you look at it on paper and in the books, they were pretty evenly matched. Mm -hmm. So it came down to the skill of the pilots. Uh, another interesting thing about that, and we'll talk about that maybe in another video, is the turnaround time on uh, refueling and prepping a plane, mm -hmm. uh, that took about 26 minutes from when it landed to get it rearmed, refueled, to get it back up. And then um, the Hawker Hurricane actually took nine. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. And the, the, the other thing to remember is that the Hurricane did uh, the vast majority of the actual yeah. fighting. There, was, there wasn't a lot of Spitfire squadrons at the no. start. And somehow the Spitfire became, you know, the poster child of the RAF. Yeah, well, I, I can see why. Because it's, it's a sexy little airplane. It's a sexy airplane, but at the same time, it was the most modern plane we had. Yeah, because the, the Hurricane it sounds awesome. Yeah, it absolutely does. That Rolls-Royce Merlin just sings through yeah. the sky. Um, but I think the Hurricane was like the workhorse. And, you know, it, was, it had wood in construction. It had cloth in the construction. The Spitfire was the, the, the big daddy because it was all metal construction. It was sleek. And as you say, it was fast. It was built from a thoroughbred racing plane. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the design came from. And it just, everything about it looked right, sounded right. And if it looks and sounds right, it flies right. Yeah. And, you know, time and time again, when you watch documentaries on it, and the, the veteran pilots are saying, you don't get into a Spitfire. You put a Spitfire on. Yes. You know, and after that, you're part of the plane. And you just feel good in a Spitfire. And that's kind of where the reputation came yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of jet jocks will tell you to this day, good planes, good fighter planes, you strap on, you don't just fly. They yeah. become part of you. Yeah. And um, Spitfire, I think, did that nicely during World War II. And such uh, a unique silhouette at the mm -hmm. time as well, that big elliptical wing shape. Yeah, you know, there's no mistake the, in it. No, the pilots knew when a Spitfire was in the air because they always seen that shape and they went, mm, there it is. <laughs> but um, you've, you've thrown a few facts out. You've, yeah. missed, you've missed one. I've missed one. You've missed one. Enlighten me, Dan. The, the early model Spitz, I think it's Mark 1 to maybe Mark 7 or something like that, used a carburetor system on the engine. Oh, Instead, they did. Uh, they didn't have fuel injectors, yes. unlike the, the Messerschmitts. Right. So what happened was when they did a, was it a tight dive or a roll or mm -hmm. a very, an, anything that was negative G R yes, on negatives. the plane, yep. threw the fuel to the top of the carburetor and starved the engine. Yeah. So you... Even when you, watch, yeah, when you watch the movie Battle of Britain, the Spitfire at the start does a victory roll, and as he comes out of the roll, he hears pop, 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 and she chucks black smoke out, and you're like, carburetor. <laughs> yeah, the little float bales would shut everything off, and then you get that shutter. And yeah. The pilot wasn't prepared or ready to recover from it, and mm. it could be disastrous. So. And then you hear the, well, I know we're rambling, but this is, <laughs> this is good. Um, that, that famous little boost, the little boost yes. lever that they had that, uh, a few veterans said, I never touched it because what it did was it injected water into the jets with the fuel mix. Oh, I didn't know it was water. No. And what it, what it did was it, it's something like it increased the heat of the burn. So it gave the engine, I think they said it gave the engine maybe an R3040 horse straight away. And the pilot said, when you did hit it, you were scared of it because all of a sudden you went. I think, yeah, that's part seat. of where that 100 octane came in too yeah. on that. So, so excellent plane. And in comparison to the 109, yeah, very similar. Yeah. But I think at the time, and I think maybe even the Germans admitted it, the 109 was coming to the end of its, yeah, cause its you service the, life. Yeah, the 110 sitting out there. You had the 110, which was meant to be the replacement, but ended up being a bomber escort yeah. and then became a bomber itself. And it didn't quite take off until they got the, um, the Focke Wolf 190. Yeah. When that, that was a plane. No, that was a plane. That, that was a good piston engine. Plane. I, uh, Britain is very lucky that that wasn't out at the time of. Mm. 
Battle of Britain. Very much so. Could have been different. When, when they did run into it, it was a, a major problem. Yeah. Especially when the uh, the bombers were flying over in daylight. Most definitely. The 109s were, or the 190s were just pulling bits out of them. Yep. So, Yeah, we were lucky in that regard. Anyway, we've rambled on. But we did talk about it. It was awesome. So I think um, Gianna and I are going to have to go off and actually get a game of this. Most definitely. Yeah, I think... Maybe in the future I'll try and get one under camera. I can't promise that, but I will try. Because apart from myself and Gianna, there's nobody else in Beast of War that's really <laughs> interested. So we're, we're outnumbered. Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> yep. Oh, well. C'est la vie. Uh, so, guys, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed our little aviation rant, because Gianna's been waiting to get a, an aviation rant going. I've seen it. It's been <laughs> bubbling under the surface for a while. Um, so yeah, hopefully you weren't too bored. Anyway, guys, put your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Have you played this game? I'd like to actually hear from yeah. you on that. Let me know what you think. And uh, if I decide to get into it, tell me what plans to get next or where to go from the expansion because that would be something I'd like to look into. Well, we'll leave it at that. We'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.